Chat GPT goes, whoops. FBI says, show me the money. You get a job, you get a job. Can I have a job? These stories and much more on today's episode of MSB Dispatch. This episode is presented by MSP GeekCon 2023, a conference for MSPs by MSPs. Occurring May 21st through the 23rd, 2023 in Orlando, Florida, this two-day event is built around the journey of technical growth from Tier 1 to Tier 3. Visit MSPGeekCon.com for more information. Good morning and welcome to the May 5th, aka Cinco de Mayo, episode of MSP Dispatch your source for news, community events, and commentaries in the MSP channel. I'm Ray Rossini, joined as always by my co-host, Mr. Antonio Francisco. How are you doing, Tony? <laughs> good, good, Elmer. In uh, I mean, you're a legit got, part Mexican, so I got to, you know, got to give you hey, a minute, right? Orale, wey, que onda? Que pasa contigo? <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like, what just happened to Tony? Right? Oh, hold on, here's the Italian side, everyone. How you doing? Uh, you doing? Yeah. <laughs> What's going on, brother? Talk to me. You got the Cuban Italian. You got the Mexican Italian. Uh, we're we're a whole lot of nonsense up here. That's that's for sure. Um, but before Speaking. we get into the margaritas, we need to talk about some important stuff. Uh, I'm very upset today. Um, as you know, I I am the uh, the laziest sysadmin you will ever meet. I do everything humanly possible to not have to work, um, and uh, I, I leverage ChatGPT a lot. And uh, besides being how a dare you story, chat GPT is not working for me today. We're recording this on May 3rd because I'm off on Thursday for my birthday um, and on Cinco de Mayo. Uh, so I'm trying to use chat GPT and it has completely forgotten like most of my instructions. The answers we went through a website that'll be one of your notables that you pointed out. It's bringing up stuff that's not even in the article. And we did check the source. I can already see the people in the live chat. Check the source. We check the source. It's the words that it's using are nowhere in the source. I, Tony, it's all falling apart, man. Like, I let me. Let me I love the uh, in the, in the chat. What everyone can't see is uh, the chat GPT. Yes, uh, that is uh, <laughs> that's the William uh, Shatner version of <laughs> the chat. C oh, my chat, my pants. The, the, ch the chat <laughs> CBD. It just kind of went high and just kind of zoned out. <laughs> You were looking at the metadata. It was not in the metadata. So just so everyone understands what we're saying here, this is very important. Take an article. We're looking for the summary of it. Take statistics of it and maybe transitionary ports of it. And then we kind of fine tune it. We polish it. The results did not match at all the article. Not yeah, only not, not, a, article, not a little the bit. Names. Yeah. Not <laughs> Like, like it was a completely different link. Like um, where we're talking about the you know, Sonic Wall in the article, they say, "Well, Disney uh, had some interesting uh, items happen this week." Had nothing to do. So please, wow. everyone, and, and it was making up facts. This. It wasn't even just the name. It was like talking about that person's time in industry, which is also nowhere on there. The nothing. numbers used were nowhere on there. Like <laughs> I just, and we know. You know, and maybe we should just go ahead and lead into your first story because that that was the first question uh, Mr. Fox brought up. Does this have anything to do with this? So without any further ado, let's get into the news. Let's do it. Jumping into my first story from TechCrunch.com, Samsung has banned the use of generative AI tools such as chat gpt following an internal data leak in april the decision aims to protect sensitive information and address potential risks associated with ai powered applications that could inadvertently expose or misuse data the incident raises concerns about security of generative ai tools and their compliance with data protection regulations samsung's ban on highlights the growing concerns around ai tools such as chat gpt that we just discussed in corporate settings and their implications for data privacy and security the move may encourage other organizations to reevaluate their own use of AI tools and consider associated risks. The situation underscores the need for more robust and secure AI solutions and to address the data protection concerns while allowing businesses to leverage AI technology to its full potential. Ray, we just finished talking about ChatGPT and the power behind it and how horrible 
it actually came out to be. What are your thoughts? So, you know, if life has taught us, uh, it's that hackers will find a way to quote uh, Dr. Malcolm from Jurassic Park, um, you know, uh, or where there's a data, there's a leak. Um, <laughs> I, and this brings okay so i literally just got off doing a, a a partner first with thread right you were in the chat you saw that and one of the very first comments that came up data sovereignty data loss protection being able to you know and especially with like gdpr and all these other concerns and just not having your stuff out there right um those are big deals and as i understand it the only one today the only service today that guarantees data sovereignty or even addresses data privacy concerns is Azure AI. Azure's implementation of OpenAI using their APIs does guarantee data sovereignty and tells you exactly what clouds it's going to be in, what countries it's going to be in, what it's going to do with the data. Um, and that's become part of a thing, right? That, that And for cases like this, when oops <laughs> happens like you know because it, if we can learn anything from these uh ridiculous number of breaches it's that we can't trust anybody to hold our data <laughs> you know what i mean so if we can't trust anybody to hold the data you know it's going to get breached at some point or you know it's going to get leaked at some point i want to know where it could be, be potentially leaked to that's the second place you know consolation prize for this stuff um and we're going to get into a notable that also has a data leak for the second or third or fifth time. I don't even know anymore. Um, but, uh, you know, knowing where your data is, I guess, is a consolation prize for being able to prevent a, a breach. I don't know. Am I off base? What, what are your thoughts, Tony? No, I, I think you're saying the right thing. I, and I also like to take it maybe to in a different, a slightly different direction um, to expand the scope of this. Maybe it's not the data residency that is a big concern for that particular leak because we're talking about encryption at rest and, and of course the secure transport, but where is the data traversing before it gets to the point of the end point where it could in theory be leaked once it's stored. Um, and of course, you know, data encryption or encryption at rest could, could take care of that and a variety of other components. However, there are a variety of stopping points that that data traverses um, and it's stored at each of those locations. So I'd be really curious as to what that, um, that lineage looks like. And even though, uh, let's say Microsoft for lack of a better term is storing everything and they're, they're, they're guaranteeing, guaranteeing their, the, um, the security of your data on the back end. What about the front end? What about the browser? What about the mobile application? What about the local telemetry system that's traversing and the servers that they are using for DNS? Uh, uh, you know, do the, if you do the recount, you look at that, you're like, wow, this is a lot of hops. And each of these hops has access to that data. Um, what does the encryption mechanism look like in that session until it gets to that safety harbor location that Microsoft guarantees? I, I, we could talk about this all day, but this illustrates the initial conversation of, hey, it's inaccurate. Uh, that's one end on the front facing side and on the back end, it's leaking <laughs> on the back end. I mean, well, and that, that brings a good point. Like I'd love to hear from the MSPs in the, in the chat or in discord or, uh, anywhere, um, you know, I, I'd love to hear, like, we've been talking about how to make highest and best use of open AI. Are you having conversations with your clients about data protection that goes into open AI? Like you know, are you, is, is this the birds and the bees conversation for AI, I guess is the best way to put it. I think the summary is that there's a lot of areas that need to be explored to hopefully plug those leaks. Cybersecurity is everything. And the good news is you can do it on the cheap, right, Ray? Yeah, security can totally be done for cheap unless you want actual security. And toward that end, uh, our next story is in the security section about the FBI's focus on cybersecurity in their recent budget request. In an article by Jai Vijayan on darkreading.com, the FBI has requested almost $90 million for cybersecurity related efforts as part of its proposed budget for fiscal year 2024. They specifically highlighted four key areas of focus for these funds, including protecting critical infrastructure, investigating cybercrime and intellectual property theft, enhancing FBI's own cybersecurity posture, and addressing emerging technologies and cyber threats. The proposed budget also includes funds for the FBI's Internet Crime Complaint Center, otherwise known as IC3, 
which has seen a significant increase in reported cybercrime over the past year. Additionally, the FBI plans to expand its Cyber Action Team, CAT, program, which deploys experts to investigate cyber incidents and provide support to victims. The increased focus on cybersecurity within the FBI comes as no surprise, given the growing threat of cybercrime and cyber attacks on the critical infrastructure. It also highlights the need for organizations of all sizes to prioritize cybersecurity and invest in the necessary resources to protect against cyber threats. Tony, it's $90 million. Is that enough? <laughs> okay, just to, just to be clear, that is analogous to throwing a brick in the Grand Canyon and saying, look what we're doing. We're protecting the most critical, one of the most critical entities in the United States for security, for information. It's domestic, of course. Uh, I, I'm $90 million. I just want to point out, that we lost, I believe the number is $2.7 billion of unaccounted funds uh, for COVID relief funds. Uh, can't figure out where that went. Um, and another $2 billion in uh, military funding uh, for the war, we can't figure out where that went. Um, and we're talking about $90 million for something that is absolutely here now, and it's been here for decades. Um, so the answer, because I don't have a strong opinion about it, is um no that is not enough i don't know if i articulated that correctly if my pronunciation in dolphin speak was emphasizing the point i i heard that perfectly it was like it was perfect it was fantastic now i <laughs> can't wait for the flipper one no um what you call it uh so the budget for 2023 was 68 million. They're pushing it to 90 million for 24. Um, I get it. it never seems like enough, right? Like these things are constant. We cover for all the security stories we do cover on dispatch. I can tell you, we knock off dozens of stories every single episode. And we create these storylines, uh, what twice a week. So that's a lot of security stories. We're not covering, um, I think it's cool that the FBI, and for those that don't know, the FBI absolutely will get involved. If you have a uh, cyber incident, you can call your local FBI office and you don't have to have a previous relationship with them. They will engage with you if you have a breach, if you have any kind of cyber incident, because all cyber incidents become federal. Um, so talk to them. They, they actually have good resources for this. Um, so, you know, but, and I, Thankfully, I've never had to, but, uh, you know, it's nice to know they have it. But is there a number, like, if you're budgeting, if they said, Tony, you're the guy, you're in charge, how much? How much do you need to secure the entire United States of America? <laughs> oh, 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 that sound you heard was my stomach that just says, and abort. Um, <laughs> so so, so there's a variety of things, um, and, and this is um, in... I believe we have uh, 30 seconds or less to describe how I'm going to secure the United, entire United States. So here is my answer. Um, there would need to be um, a forklift where I call it a 747 project where they give you a bucket of bolts and then you have to build the 747. This is a, a very complicated process, but it has to start with core pillars. I think we have to reinvent the core pillars as opposed to working with the ones that were literally designed at the time when we were firing muskets. Um, this is a, an entirely new era. It has to be built from the ground up with a framework and an infrastructure that is scale or is scoped to scale. Um, that is my only concern in the beginning and maybe $90 million with a think tank of the appropriate people um, to put it through a number of other think tanks to beat it up, battle proof it. Then we can start the implementation process. Maybe that is enough for that initial process. I, but wow, what a question. You know what? We, that's a that's probably a discussion that the MSP should have because everyone has a certain perspective on how to secure things for everyone better. If we only did this one thing, I'm certain there's going to be someone that says, hey, maybe we should just put uh, Huntress uh, mandatory. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, you know, maybe auto elevate from Lion Guard. That would, that would actually be a good start um, at the end point. So, there's a whole bunch of solutions, but I would love to hear someone's feedback uh, solution because remember, can't explain it, don't understand it. 
but once you understand it, you can control it or manipulate it. So I would love to hear how everyone explains a process and uh, maybe we can make this the first true MSP dispatch open source solution for the US. That would be phenomenal. You know what I think they're going to do with some of those $90 million? They're going to probably create some jobs, which is good because there's no other tech jobs anywhere else, right? What a great segue into my next story, Ray. From the nextweb.com, despite layoffs, tech job opportunities remain strong. And despite these recent layoffs in the technology industry, which we've all heard about, job opportunities in the industry are very strong. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics project an 11% growth in computer and information technology occupations from 2020 to 2030, outpacing the average for all occupations. Driving this demand are factors such as rapid growth of remote work, increased reliance on digital platforms, and the need for advanced cybersecurity measures. The cybersecurity job market alone is expected to grow by 31% between 2020 and 2030. The tech industry's resilience in the face of economic challenges has kept the job market robust. Companies seek skilled professionals in software development, data analysis, artificial intelligence, and machine learning to stay competitive and drive innovation. Ray, all we have talked about from the beginning of the year has been, or as we transitioned into the beginning of the year, was um, ransomware, hacks, ransomware, hacks, oh, layoffs, ransomware, layoffs, ransomware, more layoffs. Hold on. AI, job growth, AI, job growth, AI, job growth. <laughs> Serving? Talk to me. And <laughs> 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 a joke for all you sports ball people out there. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, no, I'm, talking I, I'm with you. I'm with you. It, it like, you know, I can't figure out which one of us is Bill Murray, but this definitely feels like Groundhog's Day, no question. Um, you know, between security stories and Chat GPT and Chat GPT being the security story, and you know, but. You know, I, and again, I'm I, I don't I can't remember if it was Sobel or Palachuk. I apologize for this, but um, because I've been quoting it nonstop. But I think it was Palachuk made a comment on one of his podcasts of techs, IT professionals account for five percent of the global population, but affect ninety five percent of global commerce. Um, damn, I mean that's that's the best I can say to that. So, so Ray, that is a great example of how influential the MSP market is. Technology is across the board in every single aspect of our life. How can people get involved in this? What would you recommend to take advantage of this great statistics? So, I would say go be part of the communities, right? Whether you're on MMN Discord, if you're on Reddit or MSP, if you're an MSP geek, MRU, IT pool party. There are tons of communities where, because let's be honest, we all have that uh, imposter syndrome, no matter what stage of the game you're at, you are have imposter syndrome. And if you're, whether you're looking to get into the game or looking to grow in, in the game you're already playing, MSP GeekCon is coming up. It's it's a conference for technicians. I mean, it's- Who is not going to be there though? Week. Everyone's going to be there, right? I mean, you're going to be there, right? I'm going to be there. Simon's going to be there. Matt's going to be there. Uh, sorry, Phil, but like, but we're going to have a ton of people there, but it's, it's for technicians looking to increase their knowledge or skill sets or value. Go keep going further down that career path. Um, and who knows, maybe some of these jobs are for you, right? Like, and that's the thing. I've always been a fan of apprenticeship. I've always been a fan of internships. Uh, I've tried to give back as much as humanly possible. I'm a product of, of mentorships. Um, and I think MSPs maybe want to look at how can I give back in that fashion? How can I help the next generation? Um, it's a little bit like salmon farming, right? Like if you don't have sustainable salmon farming, there's going to be no more salmon. It, yes, this is my cocaine reference for this episode. Yes. So, you know, and, and that's that's kind of an important thing. Um, I don't know. MSPs, tell us, like, are you even, are you so far underwater trying to take care of your business? You can't look at the new jobs, you know, the new fresh incoming class, or is that part of your business plan to make sure the next batch is, is ready to go and be, and be good for you? Are, are you helping build that salmon? That salmon. It's, so, it's, it's, salmon. salmon. it's clear that the, everything, the opportunities literally until 2030 are so in our favor, this group right here that we're talking to, um, I, I, 
I, I would love to maybe start structuring some, I think, do we have like, we have like resources, we have notable mentions. We're literally, can you imagine if we had articles that we kept people up to date with the industry so they felt more, can you imagine that? Well, they could watch us on TikTok, they could watch us on YouTube, they can listen to some notable mentions, they could swim into our Discord, you little Sam and you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into the notables, man. Let's do notables, man. In my first notable mention, T-Mobile has experienced yet another data breach. Written by darkreading.com staff on Dark Reading, T-Mobile may have experienced yet another data breach in April. The breach was traced back to a third-party vendor in which T-Mobile promptly cut ties with. This marks the fourth time that T-Mobile has suffered a data breach in recent years. In my second notable mention, Google adds passkey support for passwordless sign-on on all accounts. Written by Lawrence Abrams on Bleeping Computer. Google has added support for passkeys, which enables passwordless sign-in for all Google accounts. Users can set up a passkey on their Android or iOS device, which can be used to sign into their Google account on any device. This aims to reduce the risk of account takeover attacks by eliminating the need for passwords. Passkeys are unique to the device and biometric information is used to create them, making them more secure than traditional passwords. And my first notable mention from Channel Pro Network, SonicWall has named Michelle Ragusa McBain as its North American channel chief to expand its managed security provider channel. Michelle, formerly part of Cisco's channel organization, will help SonicWall drive recruitment and engagement with resellers, MSSPs, and MSPs. As part of its efforts to establish a stronger footprint with MSPs, SonicWall will introduce a revamped partner program, providing a unified platform for MSPs, MSSPs, and VARs. The program will offer a deal registrations for MSPs, free online training, and a quick start material to streamline onboarding. SonicWall aims to increase the number of services and products available via subscription by early next year. And on my next notable mention from ArsTechnica.com, IBM plans to replace 7,800 jobs with AI, and they pause hiring in certain positions. IBM CEO Arvind Krishna has announced plans to pause hiring for approximately 7,800 jobs that can be replaced by AI systems. Hiring in back office functions like AR will be suspended or slowed, affecting around 26,000 non-customer facing roles. Krishna estimates that 30% of these roles could be replaced by AI and automation over a five-year period. Despite the anticipated workforce and reduction for certain areas, IBM continues to hire for software development and customer facing roles, having added about 7,000 new employees in Q1. The company aims to achieve 2 billion in annual savings by the end of 2024 through productivity and efficiency measures. What's up, y'all? I'm Phil Buck, back again for your weekly fun size installment of AI Roundup. And with all the talk about AI taking our jobs and leading to hiring freezes and layoffs, wouldn't it be nice if uh, AI could help you find a job instead? Well, for just that, in an article from Engadget by Carissa Bell, LinkedIn is testing a new AI-generated cover letter feature for job seekers, initially available to premium subscribers. The feature, found on the platform's jobs page, crafts personalized messages for hiring managers based on the user's profile, hiring manager's profile, job description, and company information. While the AI-generated messages are intended to be highly personalized, LinkedIn advises users to customize and edit the text before sending. Hmm, sounds familiar. <laughs> this feature is part of LinkedIn's ongoing experimentation with generative AI, including AI writing suggestions for profiles and collaborative articles. And as always, it sounds like yet another feature that could automate some things for you, but not without a little human oversight. That's all for today's AI Roundup. Now back to Ray and Tony in the studio. In our community feedback section, Derek Broly says, great show guys, everyone I meet, I make sure they find their way to MSP Media Network. You know, I was just talking about MSPs helping the next generation of salmon swim upstream. You are doing the Lord's work, sir, bringing everybody to the MSP Media Network. We appreciate you, Big Tuna. There are plenty of amazing upcoming events taking place across the community, so let's see what's happening this week. On May 9th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, Tradecraft Tuesdays, DFIR Core Concepts, presented by Huntress. Also on May 9th through the 10th, an in-person event, Channel Pro SMB Forum in Chicago, Illinois. 
And also on the 10th, another in-person event, Next Gen MSP Local, Hartford, Connecticut. And coming from the MSP Media Network this week, we have, in case you missed it, AI Roundup Episode 9, The Great AI Arms Race, Can We Survive the Onslaught? Later today at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 38 at 38, Episode 12, a special Mother's Day event featuring Karina Ramos, Aaron's mom. And on Tuesdays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, MSP Dispatch presented by the MSP Media Network. Hi, I'm Aaron, and I'm a Jabaholic. We all have something in common. We all have a worst job story. Each episode, I'll welcome one guest to share their most insane worst job story. And in return, I'll share one of mine. Join me the first Friday of every month for new episodes of 38 at 38. So how'd you like today's show of an episode? If you liked it, hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't, go ahead and hit it three times or tres if you're so inclined. If you want to hear more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button on the YouTubes or your favorite podcatcher. Did you know where we also have a Discord where we post stories all week while drinking margaritas? You can propose your own stories and even vote on which ones we'll cover. As my friend Rich Banky says, make sure to tell a friend. Also, be sure to follow us on social media at MSP Media TV. Have any questions? Email news at mspmedia.tv for answers on the next episode or leave us a voicemail, 833-MSP-NETWORK. Tony, I can't, I can't remember the last time I worked so hard to get words out. Chat GPT didn't want to work with us. You and I were fumbling left and right. It, it was oh it was like the Dolphins in the playoffs. It was bad. There was a lot of Dolphins. Uh, the B-Real footage, I believe this show, the B-Real footage for the first time since like our first shows outweighed the actual footage in this. So for those of you uh, wanting some B-Real footage to see what it's actually like on the back end, watch at the end of the podcast. It, it may just be like blackmail worthy. It is phenomenal <laughs> the amount of scripts we did on this episode. There's no reason for it whatsoever. You know, we I just Phil, Simon, Matt, like the ones that are doing the real work. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry. <laughs> like we owe you a margarita or something, dude. Because <laughs> so with that, happy Cinco de Mayo to everyone, all the primitos out there, and uh to the MSP community. You guys are amazing, amazing, amazing. The feedback is incredible. Um, we're hearing that we're what the second most popular MSP channel uh resource. What a great thing, and we're always striving to make this better. So give us all the feedback. Ray, you are incredible. Thank you so much, Tony. Uh, yeah, I, I appreciate you. I appreciate everybody. Have an awesome Cinco de Mayo. Take care of yourselves and each other, mis amigos. <laughs> Be safe. This has been a broadcast of the MSP Media Network. Good morning and welcome to the May 5th, aka Cinco de Mayo, episode of MSP Dispatch, your source for news, community events, and commentary in the MSP channel. I'm Ray Rossini, joined... Ah! It's my own fault. I... Can I make that my ringtone? Ah! <laughs> Ray's calling. Hold on. I gotta get that. <laughs> <laughs> like, might as well. Right? Like, fuck, man. Oh. All right. Well, that was, that was, that was not the only one with problems today. Mexican uh, uh, Chewy. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't wait, doesn't everybody have a cousin Chewy? <laughs> right? My cousin Jimmy's Mexican. Yeah, that makes more sense. All right. All right here we go. <laughs> the incident raised concerns about the security of generative AI tools and their compliance with data protection regulations. Samsung's ban highlights the growing worries around AI tools, such as ChatGPT that we just discussed. And one more in corporate settings, in, not and, in. Stop laughing at me. By the way, Cornio. is that, is that a fun? Not, I, can, I can hear you laughing internally. <laughs> Put it on mute. Ready? One more time. One more time. Three, two, one. 
He's on mute. He's on oh, mute. Oh, you told me to mute myself. <laughs> <laughs> you told me to mute myself. <laughs> I, was, I was like, please let it go. Let it go. Let it coño, go. Coño, coño. Let it go. Let it go. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. so what I was saying while in mute. No. Um, oh, what a great segue. Damn, into I look my good next sounding like Tony. No. That was good. <laughs> That was good. That was smooth. That was smooth. Ready? That was really good. Here we go. <clears throat> I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a, a little Tony spin on this, just because it's wildly inappropriate. I always say, hey, listen, uh, sex is 10% uh, of uh, your relationship, but when there's a problem with the relationship, it's 90% of the problems. So, <laughs> I, you like that? You like the little switch? I see. I see. The point I'm trying to make, everyone, is technology is sexuality to some of us. That's all we live and breathe in this world. This is our life. This is our religion. Ray's like, I have no idea where this just went. Is this a blooper? Is this be real? Let's go back to employment. I don't even know what's going on. I don't even know if we're recording. I mean, no, let's, let's, we may have to be real a lot of that. So wait, so, so, wait, so let, me, let, me, let me do a transition. Is this our jump the shark moment where yeah, that was, like, the bloopers yeah. are longer than the actual episode? <laughs> Oh, that's good. Everyone watching the B-roll right now is like, this podcast is entirely too much fun on the back end. Okay, okay, real quick. I'll, I'll transition. 